You are about to listen to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast, hosted by Craig Forrestal. Find Craig on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy. The That Sports Guys podcast is proudly featured by NFL Draft Diamonds, your draft coverage king. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some football talk. Hello and welcome to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast. I am Craig Forrestal. You may know me from Twitter as at that underscore sports underscore guy. And this evening, it is all about the North Central College Cardinals and their star wide receiver, Andrew Kaminsky. Andrew, what is happening with you? Oh, not so much, man. Uh, thank you for having me on and thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm excited to be on your podcast. Hey, it's awesome. And this episode has a special meaning to me. I shared with you before we hopped on that I'm actually an alumni of North Central College. So it's cool being able to talk to someone that sat in the same dining halls, the same dorm rooms, that whole that whole thing is me. So let's get into it, Andrew. Where did it all start? Pingree Grove. That's home for you. What was it like growing up in Pingree Grove? So I actually didn't grow up in Pingree Grove. My parents just recently moved out here when I graduated high school. But I'm from a surrounding town pretty close, like 15 minutes away from Bartlett, Illinois. So growing up in Illinois has just been just been uh, any, everything I know. Uh, from a little kid, I've always wanted to play football from first grade on. It's just been something to me. I stay active with my friends. I have still talk to the same elementary school kids I talk to. We hang out when we come home from college. It's it's a it was wouldn't necessarily say it's a small town, but I had a small knit group of friends that we stay up that we stay in touch together still close to this day, and uh, South Elgin and Bartlett that whole area has just been just been home for me, and I wouldn't uh, wouldn't imagine growing up anywhere else. It's all I ever know. And you talked about South South Elgin South Elgin High School. And you formed one of the more dynamic duos at wide receiver with you and Derek Kumaro. Derek's brother, Jake, plays in the NFL. And then you actually squared off against Derek in the Stag Bowl for the Division Three championship. What was it like playing against a former teammate? And was there a little bit of smack talk in a text message or two before the game? Uh, it's nothing but love between me and Derek. Uh, still good friends with him to this day. Uh, there was no trash talk between me and him. I have too much respect for him and too much respect for his game to uh, do that to him. We were we were buddies on the field, buddies off the field. Playing with him in high school was awesome. And then having the opportunity to see him out there in Texas and play against him, the opportunity was awesome. We both took it and uh, just ran with it. We shot each other a text the night before the game. And that was really all I talked to him until after about when we uh, came home from Christmas break, we hung out and uh, actually sat down and talked about it. But nothing, nothing but good, uh, good words for him. Uh, I wish him the best in his future as well. And I want to ask you about the end of your high school days, because when the recruiting process was going along, you initially went to Winona State, a Division II school in Minnesota, what were some of the schools that were also in the mix at that time and maybe some of the camps that you went to try to get some exposure, different things like that? So, yeah, obviously right out of high school, I committed to Winona State, Minnesota, but I wasn't very – I wasn't highly recruited. I, I had uh, – I was, in, I was uh, recruited decently by North Dakota State. I was invited to their, to their uh, like, private camps. I was talked to them, South Dakota State, NIU a little bit. Those were the bigger schools that were interest, interested in me early on. But then as soon as I got closer to signing day, those schools fell off. I obviously did all the big camps in, around my area, the Northwestern, U of I, NIU. I did all those big camps just to put my name out there. So that was how I got. And then obviously Winona gave me an opportunity. I spent the fall semester up there. Uh, didn't really see myself fitting in. Didn't. Uh, know if this was the right place for me. So I decided to transfer home and uh, after that fall semester. So I stayed home after winter and then opened up my recruiting process. And now let's just stick there and, and finish that statement off. Was it always North Central when you left Minnesota? Did you know that you were going to be headed to Naperville and become a Cardinal? Or were there a couple other schools that you visited and it was kind of a I, I guess a tactical yeah. search for you. So I entered the, the transfer portal. So I was lucky enough to have that, but 
in the back of my mind, I knew, I obviously knew Brock before, uh, before I even went to North Central. Me and him were close in high school. We played seven on seven together. So him, knowing that he transferred in there and knowing that I was so close to home, it was kind of a no brainer for me. I just had to, I just had to keep my uh, recruiting open a little bit longer to see what other, uh, what, what, what else would surface up. But once I went to campus, talked to coach Thorne and coach Spencer in a meeting and it, it was sold from there. I didn't want to play anywhere else. And now let's stick there with coach Jeff Thorne and coach Brad Spencer, uh, the head coach and offensive coordinator, which they have orchestrated a high flying, high scoring offense in which you had over 2000 yards receiving, not for your career, but just in the 2019 season, you went for over 2000 yards receiving. Talk to us a little bit about the offense and what it's like to play in such a high flying system. Those guys, those guys are masterminds. I wouldn't be the football player I am today without those two. They've helped me shape my game and put me in the right spots in order to, to succeed and have the opportunity to succeed. Them, them having the confidence in all of us is, is just something that's uh, you can't you can't teach it. You can't. It's just a relationship we have with them. But getting back to the offense, it's it's high powered. We're we're not one dimensional. If we play against a team that we know is going to be good against the run. It's going to be stout against the run. We're not going to, we're not going to abandon the run game. We're going to, we're going to establish it and hopefully open up a play action, but there's, it's a receiver's dream. It's a, it's, if you're an offensive guy, this is the offense to come to because we're pretty much 50, 50 run pass. You can't, you don't know what we're throwing at you. We have so many things off of so many different formations, so many different uh, motions that, the defense doesn't know what's coming. That's what makes it so fun. All you have to do is know what you would like. All you have to do is know coverage, and then playing in this offense is very, very simple. It's very, very fun. And you brought up Brock Rudder a little bit ago in your relationship with him from your high school days in seven-on-seven seven leagues. How much did that help you on the field when you guys teamed up together for North Central just how was that connection developed? How much work did you two put uh, in? The connection was everything. Without us uh, working out four to six days a week in the summer together, getting the extra routes in, working out in the weight room together, and just uh, having that trust and having that uh, reliability in one another, knowing that, okay, if something's going bad, someone messes up or there's something, something that didn't go our way, that mean that we were, we are on the same page. We have the same instinct. We have the same football mind. We know how the game works. We know we knew where each other was going to be in a time of need or when everything was just going our way. We, we knew each other's next move. And that's from, obviously we lived together. So we knew we studied film together. We would watch film together. So we knew everything uh, each other was thinking when the time would come. We, we prepared like we, we prepared better than I've ever prepared before. He's a mastermind, just like our coaches. And, Without him, I don't, without him, our, our season our season doesn't have that outcome. And now you're talking about the national championship. And the next time you guys hit the field, what are the expectations? What has been discussed about keeping that high level of play going? Well, for us right now, we have 17 out of the 22 starters returning. So going into camp, uh, right away, we knew we knew our expectations maintained the same. We, there, there, there is no down. There is no downsides. We can't we can't take a step back. We have to continue. We have to continue moving forward. We can't show everybody and tell everybody that oh, we're a, a one time thing. North Central is going to win it one time and never and never do it again. No, we want we want to be back. Our goals are the same. We we want to defend a national title, go back to back, and <clears throat> there's really nothing else to it. We got to and now our season got pushed to next fall so we got a, a whole year to work and develop a new quarterback so that's cool to hear cool to cool to be around and just to get him up to up to speed and now let's stick there with the plans for the next season as you said it's been pushed back so how has that impacted you how has that impacted the team are you in any sort of formal workouts just where are you currently so for me because the school and credits I uh, was lucky. Was and I wouldn't say lucky, but I did not have to go uh, to fall. I didn't have to go to campus this fall. I took a semester off of school because D three school. I don't. I have to pay to go to school, and uh, financially for me, it was easy enough and made more sense for me to take the fall off 
still work out, still train with the team. Like I've, when, when we do stuff ran by the guys, I'm not anything with uh, the campus right now because I'm not enrolled in school, but uh, mm-hmm. we uh, I'm doing that. And then I'll go back to school in the spring to finish up my last semester of college credits and then play in the fall of 2021. So I'm, I'm on a little bit of a hold and then, which doesn't stop me, hasn't stopped me. I can't, I get, I hold myself accountable. I get my workouts in, I get my, get my uh, film study in knowing that my team's out there, they're practicing, they're, they're in uh, like uh whatever, what kind of workouts they're in pods, they're in player pods, doing workouts, doing as much as they can along uh, with the rules that the NCAA allowed us. So I know they're all, they're all doing their part. And then I know as a leader and a captain on the team that I have to be home with when I can't be with them doing my part. So I'm not letting them down. I'm still getting my work in and I'm going to be ready. I can't wait to join them back in December. And I want to ask you about division three football, just as a whole, like you said, you don't want this to be a one-time thing. And there's a lot of competition in the Division Three world when it comes to the Mount Unions and the UW Whitewaters. And with that, there are some individual players that are now getting noticed by the NFL. Ben Barch was drafted by uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars in the draft from St. John's in Minnesota. Quinn Miners at Whitewater is getting some buzz. And then, of course, there's you uh, also finding himself on the NFL radars. Why is D3 football so underrated in your mind? It's underrated in my mind because uh, you get the guys that truly love the game. Um, you're not – everybody on a roster, on a Division three roster, they're, they're there because they want to be there. They're not there because they're getting free school. They're not – it's a different opportunity. This, this game has a lot of – you're going to find players who just truly love the game of football no matter – if they're the best player on the field, if they're the worst player on the field, if they're the smartest or not the smartest, it's, it's all about the game. And I'm from what I've seen and who I've played against, there's some pretty dang good talent out there that gets overlooked at this level. So, and then obviously for Ben and what he did at St. John's it's awesome to see him get drafted by the Jaguars. Uh, my best wishes to him. And uh, just for that, for that to happen is to open up for guys like me, guys on whitewater, those top schools, Hopefully uh, one of us gets an opportunity and is able to do what Ben's doing and to show that, okay, these guys are getting opportunities. And when they get up there and we're up in the NFL and those guys are making plays and games and all that, then hopefully they'll start to say, okay, we're nobody's afraid to take a guy from this small level of football because there are good players out there. And let's talk about a couple of players that you might model your game after. Andrew, who are some of the wide receivers that you study and you try to steal bits and pieces of their game? I watch and take a lot of stuff that Julian Edelman does. I watch him. uh, I would watch him close to – yeah, my – he's probably the most who I take my game from is Julian Edelman. And then I I take a little bit from Antonio Brown, even though – all the trouble and stuff that he's been through. I, I love his game. Uh, really think he's a talented player. And then uh, I also watched throwback Jerry Rice. Just to uh, – obviously, he did it back then, still has the NFL records now. So what he was doing had to have been done right. So I watched his practice tape and doing all, all his footwork drills just so I can keep my uh, footwork up to speed. Andrew, if I was going to ask for a scouting report on your game overall, what would you say to me? Uh, You're going to get a a strong and a physical receiver who's not afraid to go over the middle. His uh, hands are very, very, very reliable. Not is not afraid to catch and take a hit, catch and make a run, catch on the sideline. My awareness is very, very well on the football field. And then you're going to get a guy who loves the game of football. He's he's a team first guy. Whatever position a coach wants me to play, I'm gonna play. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say no. I'm not gonna say, oh, I can't do this. It's, I've never done it. But even if it's a position I've never played before, I'm, I'm there. I'm there for an opportunity. I want to show everybody that I've worked. I've worked this hard, and that I can uh, make it on an NFL roster. And then Andrew, when you think about your football and NFL future, what do you think about? I think of just one opportunity. 
that's whether I whether I end up in the draft, I get undrafted, I I get a a, a tryout. I I don't. It doesn't matter to me. I just want one opportunity, and that's all that my mind's focused on right now. I haven't thought anything past that. I just need one opportunity, and when that opportunity, if that opportunity strikes, and then I'm taking it day by day, then and doing what I can in the present moment to benefit my future. And Andrew, that's going to do it for our football based questions. You ready to step away from the game and let the people get to know you? Yeah, that's fine with me. Let's get it. (laughs) <laughs> All right, let's do it. So now what has been the most memorable or the most interesting college class that you have seen? So I took a introduction to entrepreneurship class, Professor Hamlin at uh, North Central. And that was just, uh, it wasn't like your normal class where you're sitting there, you read a textbook and they tell you, oh, this is how it's done. This is how the finances to start a business work, all this, this and that. This was like, Bef- the beginning stages so it showed you where do you start how do you find the like how do you find fundraising how do you find a sponsorship if you're going to start a uh, if you're going to start a non-for-profit so it was just a whole just a background on how just to get started with a career to get started with an opportunity that if someone had that they wanted to create their own business and I, that as of now that was probably my most interested college class you wake up tomorrow morning and there's a message on your phone that says you're running out of storage and you can only keep three apps. You have to delete every other app on your phone. Andrew, what three apps are you going to I'm going to keep ESPN, have to know what's going on in the sports world. I'm going to keep Huddle so that I can obviously study, study film what, instead of watching TV before bed. And then... I'm gonna probably I'm probably gonna keep Instagram so I can keep up with my friends, family, and all of that stuff. And then pretty much everything else could be deleted. What's your favorite meal? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and why? So, uh, I'm gonna go with my dinner. So <laughs> I'm very, very probably probably more common than not. But my favorite meal is a steak with a, a loaded baked potato. All right, no, can't go wrong with that. There's just something about a nice uh, medium rare steak that's that's just cooked just to perfection. Maybe a little bit of garlic butter, not too much, and then just right on the side, just to just to give me a baked potato. I'm very very simple. I'm not a huge pasta guy, I'm not a huge all that type of different style food. Just give me any sort of meat, like steak, pork, chicken, and I'm happy. Now let's see how adventurous you are. You get an opportunity to go skydiving. Are you in or are you uh, out? I'm in for sure. That's something that I've actually been uh, been wanting to do here the last couple of years because all my all my buddies have done it. My cousins have done it, and they say they've all told me to do it before, uh, bef- bef- like before you get too old, because then your uh, your fears start to kick in. He's like, do it when you're young, do it when you're reckless. So I would love to do it here here soon. And then, Andrew, the final question that we got lined up for you, what's your hidden or secret oh, talent? that's a tough one. That's the one I'm still thinking on. But uh, I would say, uh, I don't know, a hidden talent, I guess. I, I'll, I'll ride a bike for hours without even touching the handlebars. Like, you can take the handlebars off a bike. Yeah, you know. I mean? Wow. Yeah, so you, you got good balance. On a bike. You just got to give yourself up a little. You got to get cooking a little bit so you can maintain speed. But, <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, you don't need handlebars. All right. That's, that's a talent right there because I struggle <laughs> with the handlebars. So, ladies and gentlemen, he's Andrew Kaminsky. I'm Craig Forrestal. You got to know the North Central wide receiver that's over here lighting the world on fire, going for over 2,000 yards in a season, Andrew Kaminsky. Until next time, stay safe and be easy. Hey, everybody. Craig Forstall. Thanks for tuning in and listening to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy to catch all the latest updates and podcast episodes. Until next time, stay safe and be easy.